Welcome everyone to the questions and answers based on the computational finance course. Today is question number one. The question is as follows. Can we use the same pricing models for different asset classes? Uh, the question means if we have a stochastic differential equation that we have applied, for example, in equities, for example, for modeling stocks, can we use the same type of differential equation in other asset classes? In the course, we have learned that there are multiple asset classes. For example, there are uh, stock market, there are options, um, there are interest rates, foreign exchange, credit, commodities, uh, over-the-counter, electricity or energy markets, and so on. So we have many, many different asset classes. And the question here is, can we apply, let's say, a successful model from, let's say, interest rates? Can we apply the same model or can we use the same model in other asset class? So that's basically the, the essence of the question. In this course, we have discussed this type of, we have discussed many different models, models involving jumps, in models involving multiple differential equations. So as you can see, the scope of possibilities uh, to choose a model is very, uh, very wide. A short answer to this question is um, very likely it is possible to use the same pricing model in different asset classes. However, it is not always the case. So let's take a look. What are the criteria? What are the criteria that you have to look at when you decide or when you whether you think of a model to be applied in different asset class? Um, so there are cert certain criteria, and um, first and most important is whether the the dynamics of your process matches the physical uh, properties of the asset of interest. So, for example, uh, is the process that you are having, considering, is it positive, for example, or always negative? Um, this could be the case when you have, for example, a stock process, for example, geometric Brownian motion that you use for stocks. Uh, you cannot always use it for interest rates that could become negative, then you encounter a problem. So that would be the first criterion that you take a look at. Um, then how we can estimate the model parameters. Is it based on option market or is it based on historical data? And if we have, a let's say, a model that we know there is an option, uh, option market, for example, Black-Scholes, it is not always the case that the Black-Scholes model is uh, um, fits very well to the market. We know that such models are not always successfully fitting to the implied volatility smile or skew. So it is not always uh, uh, very smart to take a model which is very limited um, to the market or to the asset class where we uh, need to have uh, calibration to imp the whole surface of, imp of implied volatilities. So this is another criteria. Of course, this is a little bit, um, uh, let's say, a broad discussion here because it is not always the case that you need to uh, fit your model to whole volatility surface. Everything depends on what type of asset you would like to price. It's often the case that if you like to price, let's say, European option uh, with a single strike and single majority, then you don't need a model with a, a stochastic volatility, for example, because then Black-Scholes model will be just sufficient. And this type of problems we have already discussed in this course, so please uh, revisit the lectures where I really dive into this type of problems. Um, second is, is there is an optional market? So for example, do we see implied volatility smile or implied volatility surface in the market? If yes, then maybe some models, let's say stochastic volatility models, will be more uh, adequate to that type of phenomena. Otherwise, maybe you may consider a model with a, a much simpler dynamics. And of course, and there is another one, which is also very important. What is the market practice for the modeling? So is there already a, a consensus in the market? Or if, for example, you can you find documentation on the exchange regarding the assumptions that you can use for pricing or the quotations, uh, the, uh, the way how the derivatives are quoted, for example, quoted in terms of black shows implied volatilities. So uh, always, always remember to start with a literature study and understanding what is the asset class you're trying to model. And then based, only based on that, start with a stochastic process. I have seen often that people take a stochastic differential equation and try to squeeze it to the asset class that this process doesn't really fit. But this only means is because this first stage of learning about asset class, about understanding the properties of the asset, this 
part was not done uh, sufficiently well. So always start with a first understanding what you are trying to model, what are the objectives, uh, what is the purpose of your model? Are you going to use it for pricing of European options, more exotic options? Do, is it maybe something path dependent or not? So depending on those questions, you may choose particular model. Here I have um, um, taken two models uh, just to show you uh, the difference, how big difference could be between uh, those stochastic differential equations. So for example, the first one is a geometric Brownian motion, so the, the dynamics used in the famous Black-Scholes model, and the second we have a mean reverting ornstein ulbeck process. So you can see that ornstein ulbeck this so-called OU process, can become negative. This means this process may not be suitable for modeling of stocks. Uh, on the other hand, geometric Brownian motion, it is always positive. This means it may not be used for interest rates. Also, the way how the paths, realizations of those two processes look like, uh, they may, may not be uh, adequately switched. So you cannot, for example, you cannot always use uh, geometric Brownian motion for something that becomes negative, and you cannot always use uh, OU process for something which uh, is always positive. So that's going to be a constraint. And um, in the literature, we see that there are multiple models applied in different asset classes, but it doesn't mean that you can always easily switch between if you take one model and apply it directly to other model. Um, there are, of course, many more models, like, for example, Heston model, Bytes model, local volatility models, those were discussed in this course, but at least I hope that now you will have a little bit of a good starting point where to look at when you think of uh, uh, taking a model and trying to apply it to particular asset classes. So short answer is yes, very likely you are able to take one stochastic differential equation and apply it in different asset class. However, it is not 100% guaranteed that you'll be successful in pricing derivatives because there could be much more constraints, much more conditions in the market that you need to be aware of. I hope it explains. Thanks.